Hello, my name is Lucy Temple. I'm a researcher at the University for Continuing Education, Krems, in Austria. Today, we'll be talking about geographic information systems, widely known as GIS. In this video, we will introduce the basic concepts of GIS, explore the complexity of GIS by a simple example, and learn about some use cases of geographic information systems for smart, sustainable cities. So let's start from the beginning. In order to be able to discuss geographic information systems, we must understand two key concepts of these systems. First, we have geographic locations. We all have an intuitive understanding of what a geographic location is, but it's important to clarify that we mean a location that is relative to planet Earth and not, for example, the layout of a building. In other words, when we talk about geographic location, we mean something that can be pointed at on a world map. Secondly, we have geographic, geographic data. It can be all sorts of data that is associated with a geographic location. For example, a spreadsheet with geographic coordinates or addresses, or any data with locational metadata. For example, photos taken by a GPS-enabled phones. But we can also consider cases where geographic information is only implicitly represented in the data and must be analyzed to make sense of it, like in the case of an image file of a map, or a document with textual location references, or even a photo taken of a landmark. Therefore, GIS, which is a collective term for information systems that have geographic data as their focus, may collect, calculate, or manage analyze or visualize geographic data. So let's dig in. Geography is a field that looks like, that looks at the Earth in all sorts of different aspects. We can study its geology, meteorology, flora and fauna, human populations, cities, constructions, nations, political entities, and so on. Geographic information systems often bring together otherwise distant fields of study into one system based on a shared feature, geographic location. To see how even a seemingly simple geographic task may require a system to touch a variety of data, we will try to calculate the geographic distance between two locations. Computers are best at handling numbers, and therefore, when dealing with locations, the most computer-fitting representation are coordinates. Coordinates are number pairs that define a location on a plane. Let's imagine a coordinate system on top of the world map, with geographic coordinates any location on Earth can be described. The distance between two coordinates can be calculated with simple arithmetics. So why is calculating the geographic distance between two locations a complex task? First, the Earth is not a two-dimensional plane like we often see on map. It's a globe, a 3D object, and only 2D cartographic representation of the Earth will have distortions. For this reason, the distance between geographic coordinates cannot be simply correspondent with the geographic distance. For example, the same coordinate distance represents a much shorter geographic distance closer to the poles than closer to the equator. Complex geometric calculations must be used to account for the Earth as a 3D object. Let's consider that we can calculate the real distance between point A and point B and produce a number. Then, we go out to the field to verify our number by a laser distance measuring device. We find that the number was incorrect. The geographic coordinate system itself does not consider mountains and valleys, the surface elevation. If we measure the distance between point A on a hill and point B in a mountain, we might produce a significantly higher number. If we want to calculate the distance of a hike through the mountains, it's not enough to know the elevation of the start and ending points. We must know the elevation changes of the whole journey, which requires a detailed topographic database and analytic calculations. To get from point A to point B in real life, we don't walk or ride a car in a straight line. To calculate distances for a real journey, we must be aware of paths or roads, the human infrastructure. When planning a journey, we are also interested in how long it will take. To calculate the time a journey takes, we must consider our vehicle speed as well as speed limits along the roads we take. Ad hoc events can significantly increase the time a journey takes. If we want a distant time calculation that is correct and optimal, we must employ real-time data about traffic jams and roadblocks. 
if we have a smart electric car, it may be root as we ride to safely, to safely reach charging stations in time. Also, people don't usually refer to locations by the geographic coordinates, the basis of most geographic information systems. We use addresses instead. Turning addresses into coordinates is called geocoding. It is not enough to have a huge database with address coordinate pairs, as most often people don't specify the whole address. For example, people usually provide a local address and let the system figure out the city and the country. Now let's see how GIS relates to smart sustainable cities. Cities are by definition geographic entities. They have a de defined geographic area made up of streets, buildings, parks, a transportation network, all geographically defined features interconnected in a system. For this reason, geographic information systems are important building blocks of smart cities. A geographic information system may be one to collect and visualize reports of issues in public spaces by its citizens, as is shown here. It may be a system that identifies irregular constructions by analyzing aerial photos. Or it may be a database for managing all the trees in public parks of a city. We have reached the end of this video. Now you know what geographic information systems are. We have also described and explained how complex GIS calculations can actually be. And we have discussed the different variables that can affect the time you need to get from point A to point B. This is a very handy information system to have when navigating through a busy city. Finally, we have also seen different ways in which GIS can be used in smart sustainable cities. Can you think of any examples of GIS technology being used in your city? Please share your experiences on the discussion forum.